So a while back we were flying uh, one of the R44s here and had gone up and went out to do a few patterns and we uh, departed and got the thing up to oh, pretty much cruise speed about 80 or 90 heading out to the west and and noticed that the aircraft had quite a bit more stick shape than uh, usual and didn't really notice anything on the pre-flight and I'll talk, talk about why here in a minute but uh, so we ended up identified more more than acceptable amount of stick shake so brought the thing back in landed it and then uh, took a look at it and uh, we'll talk about what we found here so let me show you a short clip of that about a seven or eight second clip and uh, let you see what that stick shake looked like So let's talk about how much wear uh, or movement that you're allowed to have in the rod ends on your pitch links, on the, the main rotor uh, pitch links and rod ends. Radially, which is back and forth, you're allowed to have 10 one thousandths of an inch of movement. Right? Axially, which is up and down, or actually along this up and down, you're allowed to have 20 one thousandths of an inch of movement. Okay, so let me show you this pitch link. This is the one, one of the two that we took off and replaced. And we'll talk about why here further in just a second. But if you look at it, if I move it um, laterally, there is just essentially no movement at all of that. So there's no radial movement at all. I mean, I can't feel any, basically. Now, watch what happens when I move it axially up and down. You can see there is quite a bit of movement axially, more than the allowed 20, 20 thousandths of an inch. So you can see it moving up and down like that. Again, laterally or radially, nothing. I mean, no movement at all. And then we'll talk further about that here in just a minute. The other pitch link that we found also had just a little bit of, of axial movement. It was within tolerance, but we went ahead and replaced uh, both of the uh, upper rod ends uh, at that time. So one of the first things you want to do when you check your pitch links is actually get you an eight foot ladder. A six foot ladder is not tall enough and an eight foot ladder works quite well. I don't really like the idea of opening the door here and um, you know opening the deck and stepping up on that and all that. Taking your uh, shoe that has tar all over it and putting it on the leather seats of my $650,000 aircraft. And <laughs> so we get a ladder, we get an eight foot ladder out and then check the pitch length. It makes it very easy to reach the pitch length. So here we are at the pitch links. This is the older style pitch link, uh, C258-1, I think it is. These have now been replaced, uh, or the newer style pitch link is uh, C258-5. It doesn't have the safety wire on it. I'm old fashioned. I happen to like looking at safety wire. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the new design is uh, different. This is a 2014 uh, aircraft here. So before, when I would check the pitch links, I would grab a hold up here and move the pitch link laterally back and forth to check for any radial play in the pitch link. Assuming that if I felt radial play here, you know, if there's any, I'm sorry, any axial play that it would also rear its head as radial play left to right. I'm not so sure that's true to be honest with you. And so from now on, what I'm going to be doing when I do the the uh, checking the pitch links out i'm going to grab a hold of the horn and actually go up and down to see if there's any movement any play at all in the uh you know axially along the uh, pitch link so and by the way this one has absolutely no play in it i mean there's just nothing there both on the bottom and the, and the top uh rod end there's just no no play at all So the rod ends uh, have this center section in it here, a uh, little ball that rotates around, and that's actually chrome plated. If you look, you can see that there's chrome plating on this ball. Well, if I spin this around and show you the other side of it, you're gonna see that the chrome plating was actually worn off of this, uh, this section of the pitch link that had the most movement in it. And chrome, so here we are, that's chrome plating there, and then there's where it's chrome planting is actually worn off. Chrome is a very hard metal and uh, 
you know, I'm assuming the metal that the ball's made of is actually softer. So, you know, once the chrome sort of wears off, and they're chrome plated so that they don't um, uh, don't corrode and that sort of thing. But once the chrome wears off, I imagine that metal's a bit softer under there. And so once the wear begins, you know, it may wear pretty quickly. So, uh, again, this one, this aircraft had, uh, I didn't notice any stick shake in it the previous day or two flying it. And then we're flying the thing and it has a very noticeable stick shake which brings me to another point if you're flying the aircraft and you develop a bunch of stick shake if you got a, a more vertical hop to it than normal whatever if there's anything that's concerning to you get the thing back on the ground and try to figure out what the problem is you likely have something that's worn or loose or whatever but you need to investigate it. Don't fly around and think, well, I'll have the mechanic look at it. No, get the thing back on the ground and try to figure out, figure out what in the world is uh, where the wear point is or whatever is loose. So, so again, I hope this uh, was helpful. And I think the next video I'm going to do, I'd like to do a, a video on doing a complete pre-flight and would like to show you if there's any abnormalities in the pre-flight found what those could indicate so you can look for that next hopefully i'll get that done here in the next well, week or so so if you haven't already please like and subscribe and i hope you uh, like the video and we'll see you on the next one